Well, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on what time zone that you are in. Um, my name is Rebecca Davenport, and I am an instructional designer at Nebraska Medicine, uh, located in Omaha, Nebraska. And I am here to talk to you about how we have been using XAPI and SCORM together to create an adaptive learning module that is deployed to our entire organization. So it's our annual compliance training, um, which everybody looks forward to every year. It's their favorite thing to do. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and get started. This is actually the presentation I used um, a couple of months ago at DevLearn. Um, so I will just go ahead and get started here. So um, basically what my objectives are uh, during my time with you is to explain how XAPI can be used in Storyline, which um, it, a lot of you might already be uh, doing that and kind of know how, how to set that up, but I'm going to go over it quickly for anybody that hasn't done it yet. Um, and then I will also show how modules published um, in SCORM to an LMS can also send XAPI statements to an LRS. And then also how e-learning content can adapt to the learner's input. So, you know, we're always trying to think of, you know, what does success look like um, from an educational module perspective? Um, we want to have improved engagement um, of our learners and we want to make the learning experience as positive as possible. And we want to be able to personalize the content to them based on things like their job role, their location, um, what their credentials are. You know, we are a healthcare organization. So we have everything from physicians to nurses to radiology techs to lab to people like me who are non-clinical. Um, food service, you know, and so on and so forth. So we want to be able to personalize that content to them based on the things that they need to know. And then we also track and measure um, completion status as well as the activity that the learner interacted with at the slide level, which is what we're using XAPI statements for. And then also how to leverage the benefits of traditional SCORM concurrently with all of the benefits of XAPI, which are endless. So in our organization, um, we have our e-learning module, which uh, we have lots and lots of modules, but the one I'm going to talk about today is our annual compliance training. So we develop all of our um, educational modules in um, Articulate Storyline 360, and then we upload those into our learning management system, which for us is Cornerstone. And we know with a learning management system, you know, there's some standard reports and some custom reports that you can pull, um, but it's basically learner completion. You know, when did they get assigned the module? When did they complete it? And then what is their status? Are they registered? Are they in progress or have they completed? Those types of things. Um, and then we also have our learning record store which for us is Watershed. And that's where we send all of the XAPI statement data. So I'll show you in a minute how I designed the storyline file and how I have these interactive buttons that contain XAPI statements where we can then track that slide level activity. And all of that together is our annual compliance training. So again, you know, your LMS um, can give you um, completion status and then the learning record stores um, XAPI results, you can um, get input, like I said, um, based on the learner's role, their location and their scope of practice. So in the past, um, our uh, annual compliance training was a list of many, many different individual modules, individual PDFs that have policies in it. Um, let's see. Um, somebody said it's hard to hear me. Um, Jamie, are you experiencing that as well? Maybe I can turn up my volume. 
I'll try that. Maybe that's better. Or I'll try speaking louder. Um, okay, so um, we had um, all of these individual modules that you can see on the right. I know you can't read everything that's there, but we had you know eight or ten individual modules. Um, we also, like I said, had PDFs of policies that certain members of the population needed to read and, and attest to every year that not everybody needed to read and attest to. So the assignment of that was definitely very, very difficult. Um, also at that time, the assignment piece was left up to the individual's manager or their educator. Um, so a, a lot of times they would assign things that their learners did not need to know. And then sometimes they didn't assign them things that they needed to have. So it was just an assignment nightmare. So what I did is I created one man, one module that would be assigned to everybody. So just one thing. Um, and we had the one-on-one -on -one instruction where I have these, what I call branching slides and storyline that asks the learner a question. And then based on how they answer that question by clicking a button, we'll take them down a particular content path. So with having just that one module, it was very efficient to assign to the learners. Um, it, we were confident that the approach we were using was going to get the right content to the right people. And again, everybody would get just that one module. So we knew that nothing was going to um, get missed. Okay. Um, so again, I add the XAPI statements and storyline. Um, and then there is a master slide uh, that is used to identify the learner and the source and the learning record store uh, URL. And I'll show you that um, master slide JavaScript that, that I add. And then on the individual slides, there are triggers on those slides with buttons uh, to launch the JavaScript that will identify their role, again, their location, their scope of practice, and also the slide level activity so that I will know what content path they went down to make sure that they went down the right path. So on the master slide, um, this is a really important step. <laughs> um, anytime you have an XAPI statement on a slide, like I said, I have you know a question and then I have some buttons uh, that the learner will click. Um, Anytime you have a slide that's set up that way, you need to go to the master slide um, for whatever template you're using for that individual slide. And you need to add some JavaScript code to it. Basically what that does in a nutshell is when the learner's going through the module and they get to that slide, when the timeline starts on that master slide, it's going to say, hey there system, I have a module called annual compliance training that's being launched from Cornerstone. And I need to send the XAPI statements to the learning record store. So that's basically uh, what that uh, is for. And if you do not have that JavaScript code on this master slide, that XAPI statement is never going to trigger when they get to it. So this is an absolute critical step. Um, so I just go to the master slide for the slide template that I'm using. And then over here to the right, I know you can't really see it very well, but there's an execute JavaScript trigger, um, which on the next slide here, you can see it opens up the trigger wizard. Um, the action is to execute the JavaScript when the timeline starts on that master slide. And for this master slide, it's called one clean. That was just the uh, storyline template that I used. And our annual compliance training is one storyline module that contains approximately 500 slides in it. So it's absolutely huge. Um, to make it easy on myself, I used the exact same master slide for every single slide in my module that had an XAPI statement on it so that I didn't have to remember to go and put this JavaScript code on, you know, a hundred different 
uh, master slides. So I just reused the same master slide each time so that I could make it easy on myself. So that's what I would <laughs> recommend doing as well. So here's the execute JavaScript trigger. And then when you click the little uh, ellipsis there, um, you get this JavaScript code. And I know you can't see it there. So I am going to show it to you this way. So within that JavaScript code, um, the, the little box on the left basically gives the learning record store information. Um, when you use a learning record store, you will be given pieces of information that you will put into the JavaScript code that is unique to your organization. So for example, where it says endpoint, secret, and key, we have information for each one of those three things that is unique to Nebraska Medicine, and I just um, omitted it from this screenshot for that purpose. Um, but you would have that information. Here's the URL for Watershed, and it basically states that the XAPI data is supposed to go to Watershed. And then further down on that code on the right hand side here is where you will enter your uh, learning management system or where you are um, uh, launching the module from. So it includes our cornerstone URL as well as the uh, name of the module. And then you just have that repeated down here as well. And the nice thing, I should back up just a little bit. So I learned about XAPI literally three years ago. And I learned it at the same exact DevLearn conference in 2018 by attending a session by this wonderful person named Megan Torrance. And um, that's the first time I heard XAPI, what it was and how it can be used. So um, I was just like blown away and the light bulb just clicked on my head and I'm like, we can do this for annual compliance training to, you know, make this so much easier. So um, that's where I learned about this. And then we, uh, I got into contact with Megan. I joined the um, Zappoli uh, uh, app and this code is provided to you from Zappoli. So you don't have to type all this stuff up yourself. Thank goodness, right? Because in my entire lifetime, I would never, ever, ever describe myself as a coder. Never will I ever <laughs> describe myself that way. I don't know JavaScript it well enough to type it myself, but I can certainly copy and paste. I got that process down really well. So you just copy and paste that code into that master slide, and then you just go into these two little sections and tweak a couple little things, and that's it. Um, so, and, and like I said, Megan Torrance, first of all, Megan Torrance and her team are absolutely fabulous. And I'm not just saying that because I'm, uh, presenting, uh, at this cohort party. Um, they are completely open to any question you have. If you run into any technical issues, um, you just shoot them an email and they respond quickly. And it's, it's just fabulous because this is kind of a technical thing. And um, I would not had I would not have been able to do all of this if it had not been for Megan and her team. So thank you, Megan. Um, so then here's an example of, of what our annual compliance training looks like in Storyline, and it is massive. So this is just the teeny tiny little tip of the iceberg of our content sticking up above the water. There's lots and lots um, beneath the water, but I created different scenes and each scene has a content path. So for example, they all start off on the same place. They go through here. There's a video here from someone within our organization, whether it's our CEO or somebody like that, that gives a little introduction video for a couple minutes. And then there's a branching slide right here that they're gonna answer a question and they will either be taken over here, which is our physician content, or they're gonna go over here, which is our organizational content, which is everybody that is not a physician. And then you can see, and I will give better details of this in a moment, but then you can see within that content path, there's more branching slides. So here's another one, here's another one. Um, 
So I scrolled down just a little bit. You can see, you know, this, here's one that they uh, will answer and they'll either go down here or they'll go over here where there's another branching slide. Um, and it just kind of continues on. So you can further customize that content for the person by, ask, by asking those questions and having them um, go down different pathways. So this is an example actually of our physician content. So the first section is, it talks about medication administration. So the first branching slide is gonna ask them, do you administer or order medications? So, you know, 99% of them are probably gonna say yes. So then they go down the medication um, safety content and then it'll ask them, hey, do you administer or order antiplatelet medications? Yes or no? If so, they get that content. And if not, they skip it and go on to the next topic, um, which is anticoagulation. Do you, you know, uh, administer or order uh, anticoagulation medicine? Then there's another one for insulin. And it's really nice because not all physicians prescribe all of those different types of medications. So they don't have to go through content that doesn't pertain to what they do. So they can skip over it. Um, also on the organizational pathway, which is where I would go because I'm not a physician. Um, I have a branching slide there as well that basically asks people, do you administer or, um, or basically do you administer medications? Um, in years past, that branching slide didn't exist. So I had to go through all of the medication administration um, content, as well as the hazardous drugs content and things like that. I'm never going to administer medications to a patient. So why would I need to go through that content? Um, so this year, I was able to determine that there was no joint commission requirement for people like me to have to have that content every year. So now people like me can skip it. And it's not a huge amount of slides. It's like 10 or 12 slides. But still, the fact that the learner knows that they don't have to take that makes them very happy. Um, something else I do when they answer that branching question, if they're going to be able to skip something, I pop up a little slide layer that says, because you answered yes, you were able to skip the whatever content. So click the continue button to move on. So I let them know, hey, you're going to get to skip something. And when it comes to annual compliance training, that is this massive thing. Anytime they get to skip some information, they are just absolutely thrilled. Okay, so again, here's an example of one of those branching slides. Um, it says, are you a physician, resident, fellow, or advanced practice provider? If they say yes, they're gonna go to the content path for physicians. If they say no, they're gonna go down that organizational pathway. Um, so I highlighted the yes button, um, and here's the trigger, uh, the trigger wizard for that yes button. It's going to execute the JavaScript when the user clicks the 3.4 Are You a Physician Yes button. Um, if you're going to have buttons in your um, module that's going to have XAPI statements on it, you need to be very, very particular with what you name that button. Um, I learned very early on that you need to be very specific with that because a lot of these branching slides that I have in this module are yes or no buttons. So if I just called it the yes button, how am I going to know which yes button that is? So the 3.4 is the slide number for this slide that has this button on it. And then are you a physician? So that lets me know what the question is. And then this is the yes button. So I would recommend being as detailed as you can so that you're gonna know exactly where that button is in your massive slide of 500 slides. Um, so then here's where you put the JavaScript code. Again, kudos to Megan Torrance and the Zappoli system because they have that wizard um, in Zappoli, where you just plunk in some information about, you know, the name of your button, what verb you're going to use, which for me, it's always interacted. Um, here's the name of my button. And then I can add a description um, in there. It's not mandatory, but I always try, I provide way more information in my JavaScript code than I need to. 
um, but I'm somebody that wants as much detail as possible. So you just plunk in that information through the Zappoli wizard. You hit um, a button at the end and boom, it pops out this code for you that you can copy and then come back into your storyline module and paste it. Easy as that. Um, and that's how you get that to work on a, on a slide. So once we had all of that set up, um, we had the master slide code at the uh, master slide. We had all of the code on our buttons. Then we launched annual compliance training. Okay. On the left is an example of some of the data you can pull from your learning management system, which is your SCORM, right? It will show, you know, so-and-so was assigned the module on a certain date. I know this is really small. You can't see it. But it shows the registration date, their completion date, what their status is. Um, and that's about it, right? Okay, great. So if I had this module, annual compliance training, and I have Dr. Jones, who is showing in here as completed, how in the world would I know if he completed the physician content, if he attested to the restraint policy? Did he say yes or no to the OR fire safety? So did he go through the OR fire safety content? Did he take the fluoroscopy content? We have no way of knowing that. All we know is that he completed the module, okay? Um, however, in our learning record store, we can pull a data search that show, we can do a specific person. Um, so in this example, it was somebody uh, with the first name of Stephanie, and it shows every single button throughout that entire module that they clicked. So if we ever need to go back and say, hey, did Dr. Jones uh, take the physician content pathway? We can go into Watershed and see exactly what buttons he pushed to get to that content and verify that yes, he did complete the physician content. Um, me personally, I've never been asked to go in and check on that, but that data is there if we ever needed to go back in and verify something. So here's a couple of examples of how we um, have also used XAPI statements other than just the branching codes themselves. Um, this is our code of conduct slide. And it talks about the code of conduct policy. And then there's a whole bunch of examples of how that policy could be violated. Um, you know, there's the hostile body language, verbal attacks, inappropriate expressions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, each one of these buttons, one through eight, is one of, is one of these um, violations. And um, we, or I made this slide kind of optional, right? I have an instruction up here to click each circle. So it's one of those click to learn more type of things. Um, we wanted to be able to track learner engagement with how many people are actually clicking all of those buttons versus people that are just clicking the next button and moving on. So in order to do that, I added a Zappy statement to each one of these eight buttons. So you can see over here, here's where all of the triggers are. Each one of these buttons is, is um, unique by its name. Again, it starts off 2.228 physician something or other. Um, so this is one of the code of conduct buttons and it would, you know, as it continues with the name, it would have one of these um, listed there. So what we were able to determine, um, oh, here's the, the trigger again and the JavaScript code, um, which again, we get from Zappoli. Um, so here we can show this person clicked every single one of those buttons, right? Because there's eight of them. Kudos to them. Uh, round of applause, they clicked them all and they learned about that. However, not everybody's going to do that. So by having those Zappy statements on those individual buttons, we were able to build a report in Watershed that would show each of those individual buttons and what percentage of people clicked it. So you can see we don't have 100% on every single one of those buttons. So we have a lot of people you know, nearly um, 30 per, or 50% of people are at least clicking something, right? So we have, you know, some, some engagement there with people 
who are actually clicking for that additional information. And then we have people that are just clicking the next button and moving on, which you know is certainly something that they can do. Um, and here's another one. Again, it's the same type of information, but this one is, I believe, the organizational pathway. So people that are not physicians, this is their results on how many people, you know, what percentage of the population clicked uh, each one of those buttons. So that was pretty interesting. Um, and that can be used anytime, right? You, if, if you have one of those, uh, you know, click to learn more, you can add some zappy statements to that slide and you can determine how many people are actually going out and clicking for that more information. Here's a very interesting scenario. Okay, so I had a subject matter expert who um, wanted to make sure that everybody reviewed the confidentiality agreement policy every single year, because it is something that needs to be attested to. Um, and she wanted to, me to build a slide that forced everybody to click a button that pulls up that policy so they can read it. Um, so, this, all three of these are built into one of my slides. So it starts out over here where it lists the URL for, for the policy if they wanna go out and look, look for it um, at a different time. But here, click to review the confidentiality agreement button. So they click that button and then it opens up this slide layer that has one of those scrolling windows where they can review the entire contents of the confidentiality agreement. And when they're done, they click this little red button a red X button in the upper right hand corner where it takes them back to the slide layer where they then have a yes, I will comply or no, I will not comply button. So we thought it would be interesting to see how many people are actually reading the contents of this slide. So I added a zappy statement on this button. I added a zappy statement to this button. And then in Watershed, where you can see, you know, Rebecca Davenport clicked this first button at eight o'clock and then she clicked this button at 802. Great. She spent two minutes on this on this slide layer. So my department um, decided to be some guinea pigs and I sent that policy to everybody in my department and asked them all to read it as if they didn't already know the contents of it to see approximately how, how long it would take to read that. And on average it was around I think five or six minutes. That, that it would take to read that policy in its entirety. So by having the, the two clicks and being able to determine the time in between, we were able to pull a report in Watershed that showed the average amount of time that people spent on that slide layer. And the non-physicians, people like me, uh, nurses, basically again, anybody that's not a physician spent approximately 20 seconds on that slide. And physicians spent a little bit more time. They spent 24 seconds on that slide. So were they going through and reading the entire thing on average? No, they weren't. However, that does not necessarily mean that they're not compliant because maybe they've been here for a long time and they already know the contents of the confidentiality agreement because it's the exact same policy every single year. So if you've been here for a while, you already know that information. Um, but we thought it would just be interesting to see um, how people interact acted with that. And so for this year's annual compliance training, I met with that subject matter expert and I showed her the, the data of how long people were spending on that. And what I advised her to do for this year, which we just launched annual compliance training a week ago today. And I said, let's go ahead and keep this slide set up exactly how it is. But let's add some check for understanding questions after that slide to gauge people's um, knowledge of the key points of that confidentiality agreement. And we will track those questions. We'll be able to know um, how many people answered them correct. And if they didn't get it correct, what answer are they clicking on? So if we're showing somebody only spent 20 seconds viewing that policy, but they got all the questions right afterwards, then you know there's really nothing to worry about. But if they also are getting those questions wrong, 
then we can identify that there is a gap there that needs to be addressed outside of annual compliance training. Because annual compliance training isn't really a place where they're going to learn something brand new for the first time. So if there's a gap there, then we know that that can be addressed in its own module or a infographic of some kind uh, that can be assigned later. So that was actually a pretty interesting um, thing that we did. Um, and again, these um, content pathways, we do have people um, that are duly employed. And that means they're employed by one, one or more organizations. So not one or more, it's more than one. So in our organization, we have people that are um, employed by Nebraska Medicine, as well as UNMC, uh, which is the University of Nebraska Medical Center, which is our um, medical school. So they're duly employed. Let's say they're a resident or they're a physician who is a practicing physician for Nebraska medicine, but they also teach at the, at the university. So they are duly employed. We have some pieces of content that exist in annual compliance training that are, uh, it's content that, that those duly employed people have to take on both sides of the organization, okay? Bloodborne pathogens is one. Um, the HIPAA and information security content is another um, area that they have to take that compliance training on both sides of the organization. And can you imagine people's frustration with having to take the exact same thing twice? That makes them very unhappy. So I built a branching slide in here. For example, are you an employee of Nebraska Medicine's IT or facilities department? If they say yes, that indicates they are one of those duly employed employees who will then be able to skip some content. Now, if they're skipping the HIPAA, uh, which deals with patient uh, privacy, uh, their um, protected health information, not violating that information, and then our information security, that's a huge chunk of information. It's probably 50 or 60 slides. Um, that they're going to be able to skip in Nebraska Medicine's annual compliance training because they're going to be taking that content uh, at the on the university side that uses Canvas uh, as their learning management system. So again, user uh, satisfaction, the learning experience, they don't have to take the exact same thing twice because we're allowing them to skip it here because we're going to be taking it over. Um, and again, uh, learner specific content, we can, you know, either go through and uh, check who clicked which buttons, or we can build the individual, um, we call them a card uh, that for a specific button on a specific slide, that'll show everybody that, that interacted with that particular slide. So really fun stuff. Um, in the future, some other things that we want to do is um, allow for some readability accommodations. Um, you know, not everybody that works uh, for our organization um, have the same reading level. So we want to be able to address that so that the reading level is appropriate for the, the person who is taking the training. Um, and then content for non-clinical areas like myself. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're able to skip that medication administration section, um, but we want to be able to continue to further that because even though I'm not a clinical person, we're not all located at the exact same place. Um, we have people on our main campus, we have people in another hospital, which is also here in Omaha, uh, the Bellevue Medical Center, we have people in Grand Island, we have people in Lincoln, um, they're kind of scattered all over. So sometimes depending on where you're located depends on the information that you get because it might not always be the same. And then we also want to adapt for competency or knowledge level, you know, kind of that test out um, opportunity. Um, and then before I open up for questions, another thing that we really rely on our Zappy statements for is situations where you know, you get a ticket opened that says, hey, I'm trying to complete my annual compliance training and I got to this 
slide and it's just blank and I can't go forward. Um, we do have that situation come up every once in a while. Um, that typically happens when somebody's clicking next, 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 and they're just clicking the button so fast that our learning management system can't keep up with it and it kind of gets stuck. Um, what I'm able to do is I go into our learning management system, I proxy in as them, I launch annual compliance training, and I see the blank screen, and then I go to the one previous, that's like, oh, okay, that's where they were when this happens. Then I go into Watershed, I pull up all of the button clicks that they had clicked so far, and then I relaunch annual compliance training for them from the very beginning, and I click those same buttons that they clicked before, and then I get them to one slide past where the blank one was. Um, because when that happens, when that situation happens, the only way to remedy that is to basically start all over again. And I don't want to make the learner do that because they're already frustrated. And there's, you know, the healthcare system is so overly taxed right now to, to find a half an hour or an hour out of their time, out of their day to take annual compliance training is a huge ask for our healthcare workers right now. And so to say, well, you know, you, you click, you were clicking too fast. You have to go back and start all over. There's no way I'm going to make them do that. So I do that for them. And then I let them know I was able to get them to the next slide and tell them to you know launch back in, click the resume button, and they can continue forward. So that's the uh, just another way that we're able to use those XAPI statements. If we didn't have that, I would have no idea where they were uh, in the module. So let's see. Um, yes, kudos to Matt Kluwer and Peter Gunther, who were the brains behind um, this whole thing. I relied on both of them so much, um, and I still relied on them even for this year's uh, iteration of annual compliance training. Um, I had some, some problems that I could figure out. Why is this not working? And I reached out to both of them, and they were able to help me figure that out. So huge kudos to them. Uh, for the duly employed folks, do both LMS get updated when content is completed in the other organization's training? Um, it gets completed in the LMS for where they are completing it. So um, for HIPAA and information security, that will be documented on the uh, UNMC side. Um, and we can have, you know, because we're, we're kind of all one, but yet we have different LMSs, um, we're able to, if we need to, have them pull a report that will show if if they have completed that content um, on the university side. So we're able to pull reports um, for both uh, Cornerstone and Canvas. Um, we, my department who's responsible for pull, pulling all the reports, we don't have access to the Canvas system, but we can have somebody from over there print that report um, to, to show that they completed that content. So it can be documented um, in either either place. Uh, let's see, let's say a doctor takes the nurse path of the content. Is there anything else in place to keep that topic from marking complete in the LMS? Um, I think in the three years that we have been doing the XAPI statements, I think I've only had that happen one time uh, where a physician went down the wrong pathway because um, those questions are pretty specific. So, you know, it's kind of difficult for them to answer it incorrectly, but it can happen. Um, again, I take them to wherever the content is, and then I, I always have a button that says, click here if you need to return to the, um, whatever the name of that branching slide was. Um, in case they went to the wrong place, if they click the back button, it's gonna take them back to that branching slide so that um, they can answer it in a different way. Um, do we use the watershed people or groups, uh, API to store organizational hierarchy or role data when creating reports? Um, I think, uh, the answer to your question, Matt, um, is, uh, our information is fed into Cornerstone from Workday. And then that data, like I said, dumps into Cornerstone, and then it also gets sent to Watershed so that it's all the same um, learner information. 
And for the most part, that works really well. Um, sometimes, uh, if any of you are in the learning management system realm um, where you have been working with, you know, those data feeds and such, sometimes we have uh, groups of people that are self-registration um, folks and they don't necessarily complete the information how they should. Uh, when they put in their email address, it might be their, their Yahoo email instead of their Nebraska Medicine email or you know, they're listed in Workday as um, Rebecca, for example, but then I set up an account that says Becky. You know, If those things don't reconcile, then we kind of have some issues, but um, we have processes in place to kind of um, figure all that out. Um, and then Peter chimed in, hi, Peter. Uh, yep, he said we get their HR data from Workday and they use different groups for reports, which pull data from uh, uh, XAPI statements, but filter by their HR data. Um, so yeah, it all it all works pretty well um, for the most part. There's a couple glitches here or there, but um, but yeah. So, you know, this has been such an amazing um, experience, you know, for me to have learned this three years ago from Megan. And then three years later, I'm presenting at that same conference um, with all of this stuff that I learned um, when it all started from her. And then here I am presenting at her cohort party. Um, so it's been an amazing full circle experience for me. I'm so excited to continue evolving this technology every single year. Um, and something that is incredibly exciting for us is um, we found out yesterday that uh, Nebraska Medicine won a Brandon Hall Gold Award um, for Excellence in Technology. Uh, the category was the best advance in learning management technology for compliance training. And it was this exact um, uh, project that we uh, applied for that award and we found out yesterday we got the gold award. So that's a huge honor um, and we are so incredibly excited um, to end our year on such a high note um, by achieving that. So, so yeah, uh, there's my contact information. If you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to uh, send me an email. That's my work phone number. Um, we are all still working from home these days, so email is probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I have set up, you know, Zoom meetings with different organizations who attended my session at DevLearn, and I've, you know, been able to provide additional information to them and have an opportunity for them to ask questions um, because they're wanting to kind of take this information and go. So the fact that I'm able to make those, you know, sparks of light bulb for other people is just amazing. So don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. So it's 1243. We got two more minutes if anybody else has any questions. Otherwise, I think that will be it. So thank you for letting me um, have the opportunity to uh, share this information with you and enjoy the rest of your party.